Hello YouTube, welcome to episode 9 in my Digital Aquarium Controller series. Today we look at the Nextion LCD Touchscreen Display. This is a nifty little LCD touchscreen. It is a color graphical display, but unlike most others, it has a built-in microcontroller and flash RAM, allowing you to program the display itself and trigger events from your controller. In fact, you have to program it before it's useful. But this allows you to use color graphics and complex widgets while sending and receiving data over just two serial pins. You don't have to store or draw any of the graphics from the Adreno, saving a lot of program space. Let's start with programming the display. If you haven't already, you'll need to download and install the Nextion Editor. When opening a new project, select the display that you have, then you have a layout workspace. The center is for visual layout. In the mid-lower right, there are boxes for program routines tied to the selected page or events. The details and variables are here in the far bottom right. And you select and add pages in the upper right. Add widgets to the page, such as buttons or text, by clicking from the menu on the left. You may then position them on the page by either dragging them to the desired location or specifying the coordinates in X and Y position in the details panel. You may also specify colors and background settings here. As this editor doesn't really provide guide bars or snap grids, it can be very useful to line up your layout by setting the X and Y positions manually once you eyeball them in place. Okay, I've already built the images for the layout for my display, so let me show you what I have. One important note, this display has no text font out of the box. You must upload fonts for your project using the font tool. When you do, you'll get best results using fonts that assign every letter the same width, such as Courier New. Otherwise, you're going to get odd gaps between the letters. On my primary screen, I'll be displaying the reef, plant, and room temperatures, along with the humidity. In the center, I have a number of images I created that I'll display when the heaters, fans, top off, etc. are active. Then at the bottom of my screen, I have the date and time fields, along with a single button to take you to the manual options menu. On the menu page, I have six buttons that'll each trigger some event at the controller, such as turning off the lights or the heaters, along with a button to take you back to the main page, and one that triggers a reset of the display itself in case it gets out of whack. Back on the main page, I have code tied to the page and knit event that checks 10 global variables I have to determine if they're set to one. If so, it displays one of the images, and if not, it hides it. This lets me save the image display state in the display, so it's preserved when you change screens. In the post init tab, I have code that checks the values I've set for temperature and humidity. If they're above or below a certain range, it turns the text red. I could also do this function with the Adreno, but it can be done here also in save space. There's a timer object set up to reload the page and thereby rerun this code every 30 seconds. If I click to display the object names here again, it now displays the names I'll need to use to control or modify the various widgets from my Adreno code, in a very similar manner to how I'd control them using the code on the controller itself. One last note, on the menu page, I click the box that says Send Component ID on the Touch Release Event tab for each event that I want the Adreno to perform an action when clicked. Now the display will send the button ID back when clicked and I can use that to do something at the Adreno. If you click on debug, it'll run a simulation of the display. This is very useful. Here you can try out all of the functions, including sending and receiving data. You can see as I click the button, it puts a string of data in the output window. Right-clicking this, you can copy it as an ANSI string. This is what we'll use to identify that click in the Adreno code. Now in the input area, we can type or paste commands. These are the exact same format we'll send from the Adreno so it's a great way to check your syntax and validate the effect of each command. You can see here, I have set the value of variable VA2 to 1. Then refresh the screen, so you don't have to wait 30 seconds. And the image for P2, which is a fan indicator, is displayed. I created an example sketch for the Nexteon display and test everything before adding it to the main controller sketch. A warning here, I must be a masochist. There are very intricate libraries already built to control every aspect of this display, and I'm not using any of them. To best learn and understand how this works, and to preserve some memory, I chose to hand code my functions instead. It's not difficult, but if you choose more than a few of the display functions, you'll probably be better off using the libraries. There are plenty of tutorials and documents already out there, but here's how I do it. 
I'll use Serial 2 on the Mega, pin 16 and 17. Remember that RX goes to TX and TX to RX for serial connections. In Setup, I init Serial 2 at 9600 baud. Then I have three small functions to communicate settings out to the display. The first, LCD Out Main, is the numerical values on the main page. When called, I give it the object name and the value, and it builds a string and sends it over to Serial to set that value. I use a few serial print lines to format the text exactly as we would in the next Xeon Debug console. And then, to make the display work, I have three lines of serial write OXFF. These are essential. Each command sent must end in these three lines. In the comments, I have some notes on how to call and use this function. The next two are very similar. LCD out menu color sets the background color for the buttons on the menu page and LCD out menu text is to change the button text on the menu page. One note, text must be sent in quotes. So I have an additional print to send the closing quote, which must be escaped with a backslash. To detect the button press messages sent from the LCD, I have a function called monitor serial LCD. This listens for any signal received on serial two and saves it as a string. Then we can pair that string to the ASCII values for each button that we saved from the next DN debug console. We check the input against the saved value for each of the six buttons. If it matches, we can then process the click event. If not, we go back and listen again in the loop. If I detect a button click, I change the button color and text. Then the button timer variable for that button is set to 30. I also set the variable needed to display the image indicating that a manual override is in place. And later, in the main controller program, I'll trigger whatever action it is that that button is supposed to perform. All of the button timer values are stored in the LCD button array. This is used by the LCD button timer function. In the main program, this will be called once a minute by the event timer function. However, here I simply have it in the loop with a one second delay. The function loops through six times, looking at the values of items one through six in the array. If the value is not zero, it decrements it, and it updates the LCD text for that button with a new value. Then it increments a variable to note that the timer is active. Next it checks to see if it just set that timer to zero when it decreased it. If so, it needs to shut down that timer and return it to normal. To do this, it first sets the background color back to the standard. Then it removes it from the active button count. Then I use a case statement to determine which button we are looking at, based on which one matches. We set the button text back from counter to the standard wording, and then in the main program we will fire off any needed function to stop the task for whatever button that button was supposed to do. Finally, check to see if any buttons were found to be active by looking at the count. If none are active, we hide the manual override image. Now, looking back at the monitor serial LCD function, I do an additional check for each button. When a press is detected, if the button was already active, I deactivate it. To do this, I simply set the timer value to 1 and immediately call the timer function to bring it to 0 and set it back to default. This will have the added effect of reducing any other active timer by up to a minute but I don't see that as a common case or an issue. Also, for the three buttons that control the lights, only one of these should be active at a time. So, for example, it doesn't make sense to have all the lights off, but the blue lights on. So, for each of these three, I have a check to see if one of the other two are already active. If so, I deactivate it in the same manner as if it was a second button press. Here it is in action. The one second delay loop used for this makes it a bit unresponsive, but everything works. In the full controller sketch, we'll have a clock to schedule the events, so we can scan for key presses much more frequently. I hope you found this useful. Links to the example code and downloads are in the description. In a future video soon, we'll add this code and more to the main sketch and wrap it all up. Please share any suggestions or questions in the comments, click like and subscribe, and until next time, thanks for watching.